Hello, today we are going to talk about this lens here. It's a Super Tacomar 1.4 55mm from Pentax and it is radioactive. The SMC in the name stands for Super Multi Coated and basically they use thorium, which is a slightly radioactive element in the coating of the lens, which serves optical purposes. Nothing to worry about the radioactivity of the lens is actually not in dangerous levels unless you decide to duct tape it around your head and spend years living like that. I'm going to test this one, which is the radioactive one, and also this one, which is basically the same kind of lens, but it doesn't have that radioactive coating. So we will see the difference between both of them. This is a cheap civilian Japanese Geiger counter that I got when I was living there during the years of the Fukushima disaster. It only measures background radiation, but it's enough to show that this lens is not like others. First, I'm going to measure the amount of background radiation in this room. It's going to take about 35 seconds to measure that. This is 0.05 microsieverts per hour, which is a normal level, nothing to worry about. Now let's measure the lens. First, I'm going to place this in front of the lens for about like one centimeter from it. And let's see what is the reading. As you can see, it's already higher than the background radiation we have here. Now let's measure the back of the lens. I'm basically touching the surface of the lens with the counter. Well, that's a lot more. That's eight microsieverts per hour. Well, basically I read in a website that the amount of radiation, if you have this reading, like well, now it's six because I moved away from it, but if you have about A or something like more than, than five in a room as a background radiation, you should basically run away from there. But of course, this is just concentrated only in this tiny place. And as soon as you move this away, for example, I'm putting now the, the, the reader, the, count, the Geiger counter, basically about five centimeters from the lens. So let's see. As you can see, it's a lot less. It dropped dramatically and it's actually basically a safe level. So when you have this into the camera, you will have pretty much a quite good distance fit between the lens and your eyes and your body. So it's gonna be fine. And anyway, it's for a short exposure when you just take the picture. Now let's measure the other lens, the one that is not radioactive and do the same. If this is on the back of the lens and I'm going to place, place the Geiger counter just touching the lens surface. Well, as you can see, there is basically no radiation there. This is a little bit higher than 005, but that's fine. I mean, this counter, I don't even know if it's measuring all like alpha, beta and gamma, but I mean, this is just to show a point that at that time, safety measures were not that into place and they were using radioactive materials for many different products. Let's get our lens on the X-T4. For that, we need a converter like this one. There are links below if you want to purchase it. They are very cheap. So I put this in the camera and then here we screw the lens. Yeah, the M42 mount, which is the one for Pentax, is called that. You need to screw it like this. And we are good to go. These lenses, of course, you need to manually focus them and also the aperture is manual. As you can see here, the aperture, when we move the ring, the aperture changes. But before we go out, we need to apply some configurations to the menu of this camera. The reason is because there is no electronic communication between the camera and the lens. There is this, just this converter, which has no communication whatsoever. So the, the camera doesn't know what is the aperture of the lens, the focus, all has to be done manually. In order to configure the camera to use this lens, we have to go here in the settings menu and then we go to button dial setting. And here we go to shoot without lens on. One more thing that I found very useful is going here to the AFMF menu and MF assist is manual focus assist. You have peak and here is focus peak highlight. So what it does is using a light, a color, to indicate what is in focus and what it isn't. It's very useful because you're using manual focus. I'm gonna show you now. So for example, here I have a lot of elements in this shot on purpose. 
So as you turn the focus ring, you can see that several elements get highlighted by that kind of blue light. Here the air counter label on the Geiger counter is on focus and if I keep moving the focus, you can see here that now the robot behind is on focus. So this is very useful if you are focused manually, so it will tell you what is in focus and what isn't by a visual feedback. Let's go out and see how these two lenses perform.